Don't get me started on the Holy Ghost. My view is tainted by an artist who once drilled circles in whitened plywood, buzzsawed a silhouette of a hairless man, a head without a neck, ovaled at the top. And then she curled the plywood with wet and heat, so it stood wavy like a ghost, full of holes. A holy ghost, the way she saw it as a child, when hearing her dad talk about the Holy Ghost from his pulpit, which really wasn't a pulpit. She thought heaven was a bar, a place where you drink, because that's where her pastor dad had his pulpit, did his evangelizing, among the drunks and drinkers who are apparently in heaven, where St. Peter serves spirits. And why are they called that, spirits? Unless imbibing means you're captured by a spirit, sometimes thrown down, sometimes stupored in the spirit, doing things you didn't think you'd do, wishing the next morning you could undo what you did, what you said, how you went out of control, while brain soaked in the wet sponge of spirits. Holy spirits, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour. And we're told there is a Holy Spirit that is a tongue, a tongue of fire that comes down, comes down from where we really don't know. Maybe it's always here, always in the air we breathe. Maybe fire exists behind the veil of air, inside the air curtain, inside the holes of the Holy Ghost, the black holes where time supernaturally shortens to something atomically thin, where we ride in a stupor, drunk at the speed of light, flames not just above our heads, but fluting off us, waved in amplitudes of light, shooting through space, through hollows, past meteors, who spirit us along our way.